Hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wood motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising. That's the sort of thing that you might find interesting. Please consider sticking around and subscribing. I love to have you. Some of you will recognize Finnegan here, who is growing like a weed. And yes, Finnegan is a Lady Zephyrus's dog of MV Zephyrus here, and I'm pup sitting today and really enjoying, well, almost all of it. Anyway, uh, this week's episode is back up in Genoa, working on, on MV Poem, and as it seems lately, a sort of a scattered bunch of stuff, but uh, there's some shiny bronze at the end. Hang in there. Well, all right then, welcome back to the shed. Well, as I was unable yet again to get the wood I need for the aft cabin, I'm gonna dive into finishing up in the wheelhouse. You can see I have taken out everything that makes it comfortable and livable, and well, I've piled it all back there. So gosh knows where I'm sleeping tonight because it's time to actually finish up these benches. Um, the end gables are only held up with some temporary plywood and there's no side panels on yet and there's really quite a lot to do here still. And now I can install the two uh, handrails properly and handrails. Why always handrails? Armrests. Anyway, there's lots to do here. Let me get to it so there's a chance I could actually sleep here again tonight. First off, we'll remove the temporarily installed helm here, uh, which I'm going to have to do some work on anyway, because this whole steering wheel assembly needed a little bit of maintenance. Okay. All right then, so I've opened up the bilge and cleaned it all out because it'd be a while before I'm back in here again, and I've re- uh, I fixed uh, the bracket for the oil filter as well as the uh, transmission heat exchanger. Well, the engine heat exchanger, excuse me. Uh, so I'm going to close this up again and we'll get started at something here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually replace this uh, end of the, um, of the structure here for something that goes all the way in and ties in on the side of the boat. And then I can put some triangulation in here so that I can stiffen this all up and connect it here. It, uh, this again was more of a proven concept and it has proven its concept perfectly. Now it just needs to be tidied up. So let's make a big one of these and cut that off so it can carry through. Okay then. Okay, so now I need uh, some serious structure here to pick it up. And I think I have a plan, let me go start to play with it. All right then, I ended up making a block with quite a few compound angles on it. And it sits in here like this and then just slides right up. So it can have a really good bite onto the uh, doubled um, shear clamp and with some lag bolts in here and then some big screws in here. And this is really well affixed. I couldn't have done this in softwood or really any other wood because it just would not be strong enough uh, being so small, um, it would just split open. But with um, mahogany, this will be solid forever. Sadly, I'm gonna have to set this up with some four inch deck screws for now because I don't have any big lags. Uh, but I'll get some and we'll sort this out. Okay, so a big part of the logic of the way this whole thing was designed was that the fridge is going to fit underneath here, that little fridge that actually came with the boat. So I think it's going to be simpler if I put the fridge in now and we sort of reach around it and see how that all works. Okie doke. I'm not going to scratch the soil here. Okay, just like that. Now, exactly how this is all going to get tied in, I'm still not quite sure, but I'm getting there. <laughs> okay, to be fair, I just had a panic moment, and I'll tell you why. Since I designed all this, I actually lowered the helm three quarters of an inch. So I've just reinstalled it to make sure that it doesn't foul the door. Ah. Uh. 
Right, so to put the fridge in, I basically have to create a frame for it and support for it because it has a flange around the edge of about a half an inch. Um, so it has to be supported on its, well, its belly, I don't know, anyway. So I also have to put a little notch in the edge of the frame to deal with the little lip with the little fasteners on the edge. So um, this will deal with that on that side. I have another one on this side and a top piece that will go on the top. Um, because the whole, this whole frame has to be, well, once the fridge comes out, has to be removable so that I can access the sole in the future. Everything I do in the wheelhouse, and for that matter, in the aft cabin, has to be only ever a couple of hours from access to the sole. Um, gosh forbid you have to get into the build for some kind of reason. So let's start to put this together and see if this makes any sense. Right then, let's just swing this thing around in some kind of way that keeps it from falling apart. And I added a second screw, but to be fair, seeing as there's actually a slate a gap under here, this is sort of a locking pin more than a really tight screw. Anyway, um, I think it'll work out just fine. I could put a little shim in there. I don't think it's worth it. Okay, let's go see if this actually fits over the fridge. There's extra fasteners at the back, screws that make this a little complicated. Ah. All right, so after a fair amount of fiddling and aligning and fastening down the sole for the last time, I can actually get this um, uh, test fit in here and hopefully it will just snug right in there. Oh, I tell you, it's getting hard to hold on to the end of that. Whew. Now, I'm going to have to cut some troughs for the screws that are on the compressor mount. Okay, so I can easily see where the screws were hitting and uh, I think the easiest way to do is take it apart and put it on the table saw and rip a little trough there. I won't say that was easy, but it's nice and secure. Wow. <laughs> All right, then here we go again. Ah, I have some new stripper. Although <laughs> that stuff did a fine job on the actual paint in here. Um, all right then, well, this is a $120 bucket of Smart Strip Pro Professional Strength Paint Remover and it has assured me, to me that it will remove epoxy paint. And even if this isn't epoxy paint, it'll remove whatever it is. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's have a go. Now I'm gonna limit this stripper's ability to get down in uh, where the shaft comes out of the housing. I do not believe there's a shaft seal there, but um, just in case there is, let's uh, make it a little harder for it to do any actual damage. Okay, I'm gonna do my due diligence and read the instructions in the manner that is very convenient for me. Here we go. Hmm, a couple of red flags water-based and does not contain methylene chloride which i understand is the magic chemical to remove epoxy paint however uh, a very reputable chemical and paint supply place sold me it saying that it would definitely do it so let's try well it's a lovely consistency yes actually because i represent all things safety i believe Safety goggles are appropriate here. 
There we go. In case there's the slightest bit of splash. Alright then, um, I'm going to leave it exposed for a little bit. It's actually quite cool here today, so it's not going to evaporate off very quickly. Um, because I want to be able to top it up in a little bit and then I'll probably wrap it in plastic. It says dwell time can be between 3 and 24 hours. So that's promising. I mean, I don't care if it takes a long time. It's just got to work. Alright, so while I wait for that to start dissolving, let's unclamp this. This has been clamped for well over a week, so it's certainly all set. Man, it is absolutely teeming rain. Just a little update on this. This is definitely doing something here. I'm loving it. And I did a little bit of a scratch here earlier and that is bronze. Um, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. I'm excited about that. Okay, time <laughs> to cut up a very large, very beautiful piece of uh, mahogany, uh, spelly mahogany. Uh, I haven't really showed you much of what I've been doing in the wheelhouse and I apologize because a lot of it was fiddling and frankly I spent hours in the bilge realigning the way the battery boxes are working. I had originally intended to be able to lift up the sole underneath the benches somehow. I don't, I, now I've arranged it that the battery trays can slide sideways and they can be fully serviced from the center. Anyway, that's way too much information but it vastly simplifies building the actual mahogany around the benches, which is what I'm getting to now. Last little while I've been fussing with a lot of stuff including varnishing the galley, dealing with some stuff in the builds and varnishing this bulkhead here and I didn't think any of that was particularly useful so I didn't show it to you. Now so here's this thing installed with its plinth and ready to go. It should just slide right under there like that. Oh I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, I guess I don't need that other support anymore. So what this does is it basically creates a uh, opening for a box that will go here that will match the um, fridge on the starboard side and what it'll be, it'll be drawers, uh, quite a large um, uh, set of drawers uh, adding two more storage in the galley. Really, really love it. obviously working oh my gosh and it must be factory paint because look at how beautiful and clean that bronze is under there oh my gosh 
Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Uh, okay, so a little little bit of lightweight scraping um, tonight. Uh, another coat overnight. And um, this should be looking pretty good by tomorrow. Woohoo! And good morning. Well, let's see how this is doing. Oh, yeah, that's just what I wanted to see. Nice and messy. All right, well, let's see if we can clean this up. All right, well, we'll let that cook for a little while and then we'll hit it with a little bit of a uh, brass brush. Here in the center span of the structure of the benches, I'm going to add a uh, cross piece here for some stiffening and uh, that'll just keep it all nice and tight together. It's bowing right now anyway uh, because of some stress and that'll allow me to put yet another one of the um, bases in for the seat uh, just to add some more structure. So let's get a clamp so I can hold this in place. And this will actually eventually become the beginning of a um, divider for the fridge so that we can be sure that I don't uh, store stuff down against the uh, condenser on the back of the fridge. Now there's some complications because I can't actually um, get the drill in behind so I'm gonna have to drill these from this side and then run the screws through with an offset screwdriver. Fun fun! Now drilling into the end of uh, end grain of plywood doesn't make anyone happy but I'm gonna put in three inch screws here so there'll be lots and lots of bite. And then what I'll do is I'll reach around the back side with the screw and a hammer and just give them a little tap uh, at each location and then I'll know uh, where to drill a relief hole in the end of this. All right then, so these four marks are where I just have to drill some clearance holes and I can put it back together. Winding screws in with an offset screwdriver is no fun, but I can at least be grateful it's at least possible. I know, you're saying, why don't you have a stubby screwdriver, Peter? I don't know why I don't have a stubby screwdriver. I've just dropped my offset screwdriver into the bilge. It's very, very gone. Very gone. And now time to install the armrests for the final time. Now these are uh, going to be surrounded by trim that will come around here that is the same height as this bottom piece. Uh, so this I'll use as a little alignment piece. And it's far better that these are a little high than a little low. There we go. Now, to get this really robust, um, the little stubs here are not all that long. So obviously I'm gonna screw from both sides, but I'm actually gonna put some screws right through uh, just to squeeze it uh, as much as possible. I may even put some screws both sides to tighten these two uh, pieces as much as possible. Some nice big number 10 by 2.
All right, so beginning to trim this out, I take uh, some of this three quarter inch uh, bead material I made here, and that's gonna be the top. Um, I'm gonna fill this in and start to uh, fill this in. I'm liking this, I'm liking it a lot. Sadly, I have just come upon a bit of a hurdle, and that's that my counterbore has had it, and it's the last remaining one I have that's of any use. And what it's doing is it's cutting very ragged holes, which means when I put a bung in there, it'll never really look good. Uh, and I have to do so many bungs in the next phase of this project, which I'm just so excited about getting done, finally getting this all closed in. So I'm going to call it here for this week in terms of this project um, because I really have to get a new counterboard before I can carry on. Um, it's Friday afternoon. I'm going to run out and uh, check up on what's going on with the windlass, get that tidied up and uh, get to town, get a new counterboard and be back here bright and early next week. All right then, so let's see what we can do here. This stuff has been really doing its job. This little... Um, brass wire brush is just the ticket for this so at this point it's just lots and lots of wiping that is certainly very very pretty wow <laughs> McMurray Seattle hmm good thing it doesn't burn much it certainly uh, eats up gloves quickly. Well, there we go. Um, next week, I'll pull the top cover and have a look at the gear set, but I have a feeling it's going to be absolutely brilliant in there. There is literally no backlash at all on the, uh, on the gear set. So I'm thinking it's going to be pretty good. It is full of oil and really, really, really gorgeous. Um, time for you to just start patining. Get on with it. <laughs> Well, hello there and welcome to the Travels to Jordy Beer of the Week, coming to you this week from the cozy uh, wheelhouse of MB Zephyrus, as today I am pup-sitting uh, young Finnegan here. And he, he can be a handful, but he's absolutely adorable when he's adorable, isn't he? Anyway, let's get straight on to the beer. Um, excuse me, buddy. Uh, recent trip to uh, Euclulet, uh, which is on the west coast of Vancouver Island, a fantastic spot. We went to Euclulet Brewing, hey, not on the table, and had a hazy, it's called Party Wave. Uh, well, the, the name might not be all that indicative, uh, but it's, uh, it's an excellent beer. Come on now, Finn. <laughs> okay. Um, and as most of you know, I do love a hazy. It doesn't actually pour all that hazy. Anyway, there you go. Um, sort of a slightly frustrating week for me, actually, to tell you the truth. Um, had a lot of false starts, a lot of little things I had to run back to to get done. And um, I mean, in the end, some good work was done, uh, but not the kind of work I was hoping to do. But anyway, it's all good and we're all getting ahead. Cheers. That's a very good beer, but you know what, Finn? It isn't quite as yummy as it was in the pub, I don't believe. And that sometimes does happen with these little breweries. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, I say too. Sorry about that. Uh, on to the paperwork. Last week's winner of a Travels with Jordy t-shirt is Nika Frost. Congratulations, Nika. Uh, get a hold of me. I'll make sure you get your t-shirt. And because we're not going to be able to keep him calm for too much longer, we're going to jump straight to ah, the word of the week. And the word of the week this week is was going to be rambunctious, but I found it would probably be quite difficult to use that. So I'm going to use a word I rarely use, but I like the meaning of, and it's spirited. <laughs> Finnegan has a spirited personality. Don't you? Don't you? You're quite spirited. 
now you seem quite sedate. <laughs> Spirited, you know what to do with it. Cheers. See you next week. <laughs> you crazy boy. You crazy boy. You crazy boy. <laughs>